Hi Gemma, how's it going? Yeah, good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Um, how's it all been during this hard time for you? Uh, yeah, it's alright, it's been, it's been alright. It's been alright, good self-reflection time. So yeah, how about same. you? Yeah, the same really, just taking some time out from being so go, go, go all the time. It's been, I've enjoyed it. Um, probably ready to go back now, but um, it's been fine for me. Okay. You just figuring out your camera? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, it's um it's a it's an interesting experience uh for sure but Don't i think we can all expected. yeah we can all learn something from it 100 percent, and give yeah. you a lot of time to think about yourself as well so definitely i agree yeah. so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll kind of go through um go through your story and kind of how you know all the clubs you played at and coming to america and then going back and um playing for England and all of your story and then we'll kind of open it up to people that want to ask you a little bit about yeah. anything really about football. So for anyone that doesn't know Gemma, she's played in England for a number of years, came over to America, you've won the Women's Super League four times, once of Arsenal, once of Liverpool, twice of Chelsea, um, you also won the USLW League, um, which is now the NWSL, mm -hmm. at Buffalo in 2010. Representing the Lionesses 16 times, scoring twice, and you're currently playing at Tottenham. So for anyone that doesn't know Gemma, there, Gemma's kind of highlights, I guess, from, from her career. I'm sure there's many more. Um, so just talk to us a little bit about um, kind of where you started, how um, you got into football originally, and how you kind of um, progressed through Arsenal, I think it was at first. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I started football, my brother played, and he was like a really good player. Okay. Um, so like any younger sibling of like, in any family like you just you compete all the yeah. time with your siblings so I think I just found him a challenge and because he there's four and a half years difference between us so I just would could never be better than than Alex so I just right. continuously tried to be better than, than him and um, just played in loads of boys teams um, kind of battled through the whole girls can't play it's weird to see girls play and women play football and yeah um, kind of made a kind of stand with that and started doing all my 1v1 moves against all the boys and using my skills against the boys and, and getting them wanting me on their team. And then uh, I signed for um, Arsenal when I was, I think I was 13 or 14 okay. years old and um, just worked my way through the academy um, all the way up to first team um, and had to work really hard. And then I earned my pro contract at Arsenal. So... Um, it's been a challenging, challenging journey, but I wouldn't change any of it. Playing with the yeah. boys to start with. No you say for you, it was probably good that you had your, your older brother there to kind of push you on to. Yeah, I mean, never. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't mind now. I'm old enough to say he helped me, but back then I would have said no. You didn't help me at all. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just. Just impress Alex, I guess, and my dad. So yeah, it was it was hard. I think he definitely pushed me, but he was a very different football player to me. Yeah, um, and I think as well, maybe even back then, because obviously we're talking years ago now. I'm sure the, the girls' game wasn't as maybe developed as it was now. So, um, like you said, it's maybe mm. like, oh, why is a girl playing? And then you kind of have to break <laughs> through that barrier. I'm sure you still today, but um, yeah, good that you had that around you. I think at a young age. Um, 
So talk to me about actually becoming a professional. Did you, at what age did you think, oh, I could probably actually, I could probably actually do this as a, as a career? Was there any point um, during Arsenal where you thought that or were you just kind of taking it day at a time? Um, I think as a kid, like even in my teenage years, I just really, I used to go and watch like Arsenal women play all the time. I used to idolise it, but I never yeah. thought about, um, I think I just loved football. I loved to play. I'm a real football purist. I absolutely love football. I'm, yeah. You know, at training, I'll always get on the ball. You won't see me without a ball. Even on a drinks break, I'll have a ball. And I've always been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I, I put too much pressure on myself with that. But I think I really started to get ambitious when I was, I was 17, I think. And I did... I mean, I was always wanted to be the best, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I was 17 and, and a coach sat down and did um, a review with me. And, and she asked me what... what you know, what my long-term targets were. And I was, I was writing things down, like get a better with my shooting. Yeah. But she, she looked at me weird and she was like, um, what do you, do you see yourself play, playing for England? Do you see yourself playing first yeah. team? And I was like, I've never thought about it. Um, and she said, well, you need to start thinking about it. And from then on, I went, that, that's when it came to me. That's like, oh, okay. so I could. Yeah. And then from then on, I, I, there's, I just went for it. Didn't look back. Um, yeah, I didn't look back, and I, I, I was still wanted to be the best. I've always wanted to win everything. Anyway, yeah. as a kid, I, sports day, anything at school, I was yeah. so on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anything, but um, I think I just that probably gave me a, a level of confidence as well to really push yeah. on at that age, and I didn't look back. That's really so. good, though. I feel like it's kind of maybe back to front because a lot of players nowadays are thinking. I mean, I always get questions all the time, like how do I get to the Premier League or how do I, you know, mm -hmm. how do I play for my country? How do I yeah. do this and that? And it's just like, just maybe your mentality is better of just every single day, just trying to love the game and just keep getting better. And then those targets yeah. will kind of come in time rather than thinking so far in front. Um, obviously it worked out for you, but obviously I think as well, you do need a coach that kind of sees it in you maybe when you can't see it um, yeah. for yourself. So at 17 then after that happened and you started pushing on, Talk to me about actually becoming a pro and how was it, you know, your first few years there um, at Arsenal and, and how did you kind of develop once you started playing, you know, in the big time, really? Yeah, I mean, um, at that point, I was, I was so young and I was starting to get opportunities when I was yeah. 18, um, but it wasn't pro. It wasn't pro then. We were training oh, okay. like two, three times a week, but okay. I was in a college programme where I was training every day anyway. Okay. But I was getting my opportunities. It's I only I, my first experience of professional football every day was in America. Oh, okay, uh, so even yeah. at Arsenal, you weren't pro at that time. No, 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 okay. no. But I I did train quite a lot with Arsenal anyway, with like the youth system, like with the like academy, which was kind of six, ages sixteen to eighteen every day, and yeah. I, I continued to do that with. Um, Emma Hayes, who's a coach of Chelsea now. Yeah. Um, so I was training every day anyway. And, you know, back then I was playing football with boys anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I was allowed to. I have no idea. Um, yeah. But I was playing football with, with guys like all the time. And uh, to be honest, I think that's where I've always developed my um, solo individuality in, in, yeah. in football. So um, because you can't beat a guy with pace. Not as right. female. I mean, right. I've always been much quicker than everyone else, but I've, I've learned to outmanoeuvre guys and get away using my pace after and stuff. So, Definitely. yeah, my first, but working with Arsenal and um, getting first team opportunities, it was the hardest first team I've ever tried to get into in my life because every single player in the squad were like full on senior adult internationals. Was this um, the time when like Kelly Smith and Yankee and all yeah. them were there? Oh, so yeah. You're talking about like legends in England. The best. Yeah, I mean, I for me, Kelly Smith's like the best female player that's ever graced the planet. Yeah, she was unbelievable, um, I remember. And to, to get into that team was the, the hardest. I had the most patient I've ever had to be in my career. Because um, I was young yeah. as well. When you're young, you just you just want things. But um, I was fortunate enough of those players like Rachel Yankee and Kelly around me. To, they were really embraceful of me as a youth player and really yeah, guided me into my journey of professional football. I was going to ask um, that. Did they kind they, of put their arm around you and guide you yeah. uh, along the way? Yeah, they were um, 
the best players in the world are, are humble and will, will help youth players. And um, they, I'll never forget lots of words that they, all the Arsenal team would, would help me develop as well as the coaches. Um, to help me, you know, work. And what yeah. a place to start as well. I mean, yeah. you're talking about coming through there so young. Once you've, mm. you accomplished that, I'm sure you can't felt you could do pretty much anything after that. And those girls, I couldn't even imagine having people like that around you that can not only yeah. help you kind of on the pitch, but just kind of guide you. Because it must have been hard going into that environment. You're looking around and like you said, you're, you're talking about some of the best players that were playing. Yeah, I mean, I was advised by other coaches to go and get 90 minutes every weekend. Mm. But I didn't, I, I felt like I wanted to challenge my myself in yeah. that environment to try and stick with it with the best players in the country. That's yeah. what I want. And I think that's built my career is going through that and um yeah and, and being around players like that and then you get I remember when I first got got on and started a game for Arsenal and you know you had Yankee on the left Kelly up front wow. and I started on the right wing and I just remember the first transition where we won the ball and I was like you lot are transitioning too fast I can't get out the pitch so <laughs> I was I was like oh and then um you know when you just get a groove and I think yeah. I got um a couple of assists but um, yeah, you just go from really idolising them, and, and forever I will, even at my age now, yeah. to, do you know what, I'm starting to build confidence now because I'm playing alongside you. Right. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, it was unbelievable to play with players like that. And for, for me, the, probably one of the best teams that's ever graced the planet was that team. Yeah, for sure, Arsenal, yeah. no doubt. Was yeah. that what, if anything stands out to you, what do you think was the biggest kind of like you said, the pace of the game, I'm sure. Was there anything else that you felt was really tough to sort of adapt to when you actually played with those girls? What was the, what was the biggest difference from what you'd experienced before that? Oh, yeah, I, I don't even... I don't know. Like, they were just all <laughs> so good. Like, um, yeah. But I, I have to credit, like, the coach at the time was Vic Akers, who has been, he is the heart and soul of Arsenal Football Club, always has been. And um, he created Arsenal Ladies. And uh, he would always encourage me to pick up the ball and go and beat people. Even in training, he'd, yeah. even if I wasn't going to get a chance in the first time, I'd train in the first time, he'd say, get the ball and just run. Just run with it. Because that's, that's what you're good at. So that's what he wants you yeah. to do. And... Um, yeah, I just think everyone encouraged me so much to do what I was good at, and I'll never forget that. Yeah, um, you need that. And you then, definitely... Yeah, and and I think th to do that at at the speed, I think Arsenal was such a dominant team in the league when I was getting when I was working through those ranks, and um, I think it, I was confident in myself against opposition of any team, yeah. but I think it was getting used to the speed of play from those players alongside me was probably the biggest challenge. But the fitter I got and stronger I got and training with those players week in, week out, I think I started to adapt. And you do adapt as, as you get more experience anyway. And Definitely. It's kind of like sink or, swim. sink or swim, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you go out there and you improve or you kind of shy away from it and, you know, all the good players will, will step up. Were you always playing on the wing um, from a young age? And did you always play in an attacking role, like beating players and getting down and getting crosses in and cutting off the wing? Was that always mm -hmm. your position or did you kind of go into that? Yeah, I've definitely been played nowhere else on the pitch apart from <laughs> anywhere in the offensive half of the pitch. So uh, anyone that knows me well knows I do not like defending. Yeah, so, no, um, the same. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, right wing, left wing, centre forward, maybe in the middle a little bit, but nice. but not really. Just um, I've always been uh, from a young age, pick the ball up and just run down round people like bowling pins. That's been me. Yeah. So. Skill people and then get crosses into the box. Yeah, yeah, love it. So talk to me about. Um, I mean, you've been at, I think, 13 clubs or a lot of clubs. So let's talk mm. about kind of leaving Arsenal, how that came about. And then the next few years, I think you went to America, not that quick after that, but a couple of years yeah. after it was. So um, talk to me about how that all came about as well. Yeah, so obviously I've grown grown up through Arsenal Academy and um, yeah. I just found that, um, I mean, it actually was um, the American League um, went professional. Um, okay. after, and... Um, Kelly Smith, Alex Scott, um, Karen Carney, they're all like probably familiar names to a lot yeah. of people in the women's game. They all went and played professional in the States in this new league. And I didn't go that year. I was still kind of like an up-and-coming player. So that was the first, at, the first year it was pro they went? Pro. 
and I just knew that's what I wanted. Like, I really wanted to go and give that a go. And, um, yeah, I got an opportunity, I think it was a year and a half later, to go to Western New York, New York Flash, which is now the Carolina current team now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I had the opportunity, and I just wanted to take it and go and, and how did it go? How was it going over there? Um, it was great um, on the basis that um, I got to play on a team with Marta, Christine Sinclair, Alex Morgan, wow. Caroline Sager. I mean, it's it's playing with different players and gaining a different experience and different style of football. Um, yeah. yeah, and to train every day. And, and, and I've always been a fan of America as well. I'm a big yeah, fan. I think English of people, we just love America. Like, yeah, I know. It's the same for me. I came yeah. here, and even though when I first came to the US, I wasn't in like the best state, but I just loved the people and the way of life yeah. and I just preferred it um, yeah. and I think it's the same for a lot of English people they just love it <clears throat> yeah I just I mean I've spent a lot of time over there like for va like vacation holidays yeah um driven across the country just I I'm a big fan of it and I really wasn't in love with the country as well and I just wanted to go and experience it and yeah I can happily say it's probably one of the best experiences I've had um <clears throat> And uh, yeah, it was it was brilliant to, to play over there and and play with those players and um, get that experience as well. So it was, right. it was how cool. how was it that first year at Buffalo? I know I think I read you didn't play that much, but then didn't the team win that year or was it? Yeah, the next year? yeah, it was funny because um, I had kind of like an up and down season, but yeah. I had probably the best start of my life. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I had to wait for my visa to go through, and then yeah. um, my visa went through, so I flew out and we played. Um, Boston um, a day later okay so I didn't start um, but I didn't have as much experience as kind of the martyrs and right um, and you're I still young at this point you're only yeah. what, 22 21 yeah and um, yeah I came off, off I came on off the bench against Boston and um, for about 15 minutes and we were 1-0 up and I think I scored to make it 2-0 oh, um, nice. but I ran the ball from like the halfway line um, all the way through. Um, Not a bad way to settle down. <laughs> yeah, and and do you know what? It was great because no one really knew who I was, so okay. it was kind of like a here I am type. Moment. Yeah, and I was only fresh off a plane. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of the youth side. You like kind of young side. You just you just go on and you just don't know anyone. Fearless uh, though. Yeah, I have no idea about style, and I just went and did it and it was just great and then it was an up and down season but we won the won the league and it was it was brilliant um, yeah, and the crowds were great so um yeah it was a really good experience and um i'll never forget it and, and the girls that i played with um were, were fantastic as well awesome. really nice people awesome and you didn't you go back and then come back to america after that because you had two spells in america right um yeah but not it was um back when um the league and um it, we weren't professional in, in England so right, right. you'd kind of have the summer free really so I just used to, to oh, okay, I'd, I'd come over to America to play for a couple of months but I was always an Arsenal player I, was, I just used to come over and play a few times but I've always an Arsenal contracted player got you got you got you so let's talk about um England because obviously you've you started mm -hmm. playing for England um I think you played some of the youth ranks and then made a full debut you've scored for your country was that the highlight of your career pulling on the England shirt and I mean scoring a goal you played it you know I couldn't even imagine it how was that yeah I mean I said it um putting on um representing your country is you know is for any professional player is probably your ultimate ambition or it may not be for some but um it, it really is it's um the best players in the country yeah. um so you're in that squad um and yeah, to put on a shirt and and play in front of my family was probably the proudest moment. Um, yeah. I know my family are very proud and um, ambitious as I want to be. I've always wanted to 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 be a part of something like that. Um, being able to be the best, you know, some of the best, you know, that there is around. And um, yeah. yeah, definitely one of the proudest moments. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And give me some other um, highlights from your career. I know you've you've played at Wembley in front of like thirty thousand mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you won the double at Chelsea. You've done a lot in your career. Is there anything, I'm sure there's multiple, but is there anything that stands out to you where it's like a, a moment that you really cherish the most? Um, do you know what? I can't knock my career. I've had such a great career. Um, no, I was reading your 
I know I knew you were getting on and you know you're getting towards mm -hmm. the end of your career maybe mm -hmm. and I was reading through I was just like wow I can't reel all this off but yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's been a, a, an unbelievable experience yeah. I still feel like I've got so much more to give like physically yeah, I feel sure. great um I, feel, I still feel like fast um I think an attribute of me being really technical is uh, I can evolve my game right um, you can adapt but, to yeah yeah yeah, for sure. yeah. I feel like I can, whether my coaches do, I don't know. <laughs> but, Hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just keep getting the contracts, you know. Exactly, just keep getting <laughs> but, the contracts. But, um, yeah, the career's been great. I think a highlight, um, there's been so many good moments, so to pick one is really hard. But I think I was probably at my peak of enjoyment um, was my first year at Chelsea. Okay. And um, Because we won the double and yeah. um, we had a great team. It was a, a team with um, Frank Kirby, Frontline, Eni Aluko, wow. uh, G um, in the number 10. Uh, the whole team was brilliant. Like, the whole she team... was, she's a great, the Japanese girl, right? Yeah, she, South uh, Korean. She's unbelievable. Yeah, South she Korean, is, yeah, she's unbelievable. Um, yeah, yeah she's, but we had such a great team. I mean, G was fantastic. But um, yeah, we won the double that season. But you know, when you just have like a season or a feeling where the the team cohesion is so high yeah. and everyone gets on everyone's mates um it, and your, your football just takes over and we were, we just we played so well and that was the year we the club had first won an FA cup and that was the first FA cup final at Wembley wow and yeah. um, i just felt on top of the world like on top of the world that that, that whole season and i think it's really hard to feel on top of the world for like an entire season because consistency yeah. is such a um, it's such a demanding thing for the game and it's really yeah, hard to find and, and I felt because I was so happy my consistency was, was high the right. whole more or less I had Good. a few tips but not really yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they've kind of flipped yeah. that to have there been any moments in your career where it's been a struggle I know you've moved to a lot of clubs was there any times yeah. where you didn't want to leave a club and or was there any times where you had a tough um, tough experience on the pitch how did you deal with it as a um, as a player, yeah. so, I think I, I've been quite fortunate. Touchwood that yeah. um, I haven't really suffered from any major, major injuries. Um, I've had an injury this season um, with my ankle, but I wouldn't. Okay. It, it, I was only out in a couple of months. So okay, maybe just twelve well. weeks. But well, that was, you're very, you're very fortunate. Very fortunate. Um, but I think um, I think the biggest challenge for my career has got to be um, not always being in favour all the time, which is really yeah. hard to do, especially um, the more the game um, improves and develops. Right. Um, you, you, it's it's tough. The game becomes more tactical. Certain players are, are better for different games, and Definitely. I think the hardest thing is staying in it when you're not in favour. Yeah. Um, but there's a silver lining because mentally you get better for it all the time whether things are done um and hurt your feelings or don't hurt if one thing you you, you have to I've, I've had multiple times where i feel like maybe i should have played but i didn't but you can't just get selfish about it you've got to think about the team um yeah. keep you know there'll be times where i maybe didn't handle myself properly or there'll be times where i can really say i did and i think yeah. the hardest thing is is being able to deal with um not being in favour all the time because all you want to do is is play. But and uh, and that's the reality of the game. I mean, you're not going to be. It's a game of opinions. There's going to be times mm -hmm. where players are ahead of you, and it's how you think. Like you said, it's about how you kind of react to that and not spit in the dummy sometimes, which is hard when you're younger. I'm sure it's maybe easier. It gets easier as you get older. Uh, you know, in your career, and you become yeah. more mature. Um, important for players to know that because. I always, like I said, players all the time, I'm not playing, what can I do? And you just got to be mature about it. Yeah. Look at yourself first, I think. Yeah, I think, I'll never forget when I was at Liverpool and um, one of the players called Nikki Rosler, she's a German girl, she did her ACL uh, two seasons on the bounce. Oof. And um, But she just said, um, if she doesn't play, because um, her ambition was to always make the senior team, and I'll never forget. Um, how much you can take away from, from foreign players coming from other countries. Yeah. Germany being one of the best female, you know, best countries in football. She said, um, she went, if someone plays over me, she went, I'm never going to look at that person. Like, and compare myself. I'm just going to get my head down and work on myself. Which is the and, mentality to have. And I just thought, do you know what? Like, like we've all got to start doing that. And it's, it's not yeah. that... Yeah. 
I mean, everyone has their different ways of doing it, but I just think it's, you do have to not compare yourself to other people and you have right. to solely work on what's missing for you or what you need to do better or you yeah. know what, be patient with it. I mean, I had to be patient making the first team. Um, yeah. There's been times where I've been at my best and not played because I didn't suit a game, but you have to, it's a team game. And if yeah. anyone it's an individual sport, it's not. Right. Uh, and because... Um, you know, I, I've been told, look, we need you to impact the game. So, fine, I'm going to impact the game. As long as I feel good and I'm, being, I'm going to impact the game, that's fine. Because yeah. you have to be ready at all times. And it's a game of opinions. And it's also spotlights on you at all times at the top level. Yeah. So, you dip. Is you're not really affecting anyone else, but it just doesn't look great on you if you, right. you know. So, um, yeah, and you've got to think about it that way as well. But... I think for anyone trying to make it, it would be embrace everyone. Embrace yeah. everyone. Again, um, that point that the German that Rosner made, I was watching a high-performance podcast and Van Persie was talking, I'm sure you've seen it, he was talking yeah. about his kid after a game and his kid's all down because he didn't play in a big game and, his, and Robin Van Persie, his dad was like, you look like a loser right now because you're blaming everyone else. You're blaming the coach and mm -hmm. other players and you've got winners look in the mirror and they say, what can I do to force my way in or what can I do to improve? He said, I'm, he said, I'm your dad and I don't care either way, but this is how winners think. And then yeah. he said after that, you know, he saw him training the next day as hard as he's ever seen him. Yeah. But it is the mentality. That's from a top professional, you know, um, you're talking about the same the same thing there from from uh, the Liverpool player there. And it's just yeah. so true. The mentality is massive and you can't um, let little things like Because really they are, little, not playing the game is a small thing in a, in a big, in a big scale. Um, you've got to just think mentally, what can I do? And, Again, look in yourself first. I think that's more important for young players. Yeah, it's. Do you know what? I definitely encourage um, kids to to look at these pro people's journeys. I, I mean, yeah. I remember. I, don't, I think Messi didn't. I think he got injured. I remember seeing a story on Messi, and he got injured um, and didn't make. I think he made it back to training. He mm -hmm. made the squad for a Champions League final for Barcelona. Wow. Um, and I think it was when they played Arsenal in the Champions League final. It was when Ronaldinho was there. Yeah, I remember. And um, I, 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 apparently he did not choose to travel because wow. he was so emotional that he didn't get. He wasn't. He wasn't ready. Right. And um, but you, I think, and I look at him now, and I think you're the best player in the world. So what was that moment in your head when you got when right. you did that that chance because you weren't ready physically? You're a great player, but look at him now like he must have gone right from that moment that's not happening yeah. you know you can't help injury but he, that i i think that helps the journey 100 yeah, yeah. Um, and you have to fuel it you have to bring the fuel to the fire with stuff like that definitely know? and um i think it's only it will only benefit you but it's hard to take it from 100 percent. just yeah. gotta look at the bigger picture and like yeah. you said think think about how you can improve it yeah. Um, so let's talk about kind of up to today. You're, you're playing for Spurs now. Um, how's that been? Uh, your first, I mean, you've only joined not that long ago. How's, how's that been? Uh, playing for your third club in London. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you get any stick from fans? Like, you can't go yeah. from after the Chelsea. To, no, uh, I've been right. I mean, the Chelsea fans are just unreal. They, to be fair, when I've seen the Chelsea fans now, they're so embraceful of me. And I think when you've done so well for a club, they love, yeah. they'll always love you for it, you know? It was great. When I, I played them last season, they um, they gave me two gifts. At oh, really? And, That's and quality. Them, which was... Um, Really nice and um, yeah, great fans. And going back there, they've never given me stick or anything, so it's that's always been great. Cool. But um, yeah, yeah, great club. I mean, um, Spurs. Yeah, it's been a good journey actually. Um, re really, um, quite um, slyly um, proud um, because uh, we were we were um, we were kind of predicted to to get relegated almost. Oh, really? Right, and um, because it's a new team, not a lot, not not a lot was known about the team, and uh, yeah. there's just been a lot of results that's gone our way. Um, Good. And we've just really embraced them, um, and you know I've got to give credit. Uh, I've got been brought in on onto the club and into the club as a more experienced player alongside yeah. some other great players. And then a lot of the my teammates at, at Spurs, they've uh, never been professional footballers before. They've never trained in a professional environment. Wow. Um, so you could understand why people would say we wouldn't 
do you know be great for this season but credit to the team and, and the coaches it's, it's so been how a tough, that for you? tough how ride that for you going into a different because you're going in as um because I'm sure you remember going in at Arsenal being those yeah. that young girl yeah. I'm sure have yeah. you been the Kelly Smith you know putting your arm around the youngsters and helping them yeah, I, I mean, I've I've always said I'd I'd want to follow in that footstep because yeah. I appreciated what they did for me and definitely uh, it's it's been a challenge definitely. But the girls at Spurs, they're just they're very um, we've got a really good team spirit there. All the girls are very embraceable of yeah. nations and um, yeah, I I feel like I've I've helped people. I don't know, that's for them. I'm to sure do. you have. <laughs> I mean, I've definitely had my moments of frustration, but that's probably my fault, not not anyone else's. Um, but um, I, I I do like to try and help, and I think there's a natural. Um, I've got a natural um, personality to to help people. I do really care, um, yeah. but I think that's massively been influenced by growing up with Kelly and Rachel. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, at a young age, being in that environment must have shaped yeah. you a little bit. Yeah, um, I'd but... I'd always want to be a player that I that I could help the younger yeah. players that are coming through. I'd, I'd love to be a part of their journey. Definitely. And let's kind of, that stems off into, um, into GD7 Elite. Let's talk about, um, you obviously started your own academy and how did that come about and how's that been to kind of have the opposite perspective, really, like kind of the coaching side as well in there. How's that, um, how's that been for you? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always, um, like I, I'm a big fan of um you know, that game when we've played is uh, making it um, like a little kid's day, like going and signing their shirt and yeah. making a great experience for them. And um, I've always enjoyed coaching and I've coached a lot uh, around boys football. Um, and I don't know, you just build passion for it, don't you? you know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, 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 yeah so... Um, it's just kind of built and it, it went from people wanting to do one-to-one. So I would do a bit when I wasn't making a lot of money playing football because we weren't professional. Right. To, um, you know, I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed the development and helping kids become more confident. Yeah, uh, and I think it just comes down to, like yeah. you said before, about the girls that are at Spurs even. It just comes down to actually caring about people and... yeah. You know, I never saw it as a kind of a career or about the money. I just thought mm. I want to just help the youngsters and I want to yeah. help players to, because you know that everyone needs somebody that can believe in them and help them. And I think learning how to communicate with with different types of people, which I learned from playing with players from everywhere and being coached by yeah. different coaches, different countries, like much like yourself, I feel like I learned how to communicate well with different people, which is important as a player and it's super mm. important as a trainer as a coach or as a, as a mentor to youngsters and um yeah that's where you get so much from it i think like it's so beneficial to me as well as the it's kind of reciprocal which is the best thing about it really yeah i think that it's so rewarding to see someone build a person as well yeah, and, yeah. um i mean i've been um I kind of branded my like, academy, so to yeah, speak. Yeah. We're just a training group. That's all. Right. But, you know, players of, of, of an elite ability. I used to work for Rachel Yankee in schools, um, okay. helping the kids in the schools and things like that. And um, kind of built, things have naturally built for me to do my GD Elite um, coaching academy um, and where I have some so, so many talented players come into it to work with me that I feel... Um, very lucky to, to to be coaching there and guiding them through their journey, but also, um, yeah, I think it's um, mentoring them in their life as well, making sure that they're doing the right things. Um, right, that's the biggest thing. Not getting in trouble at school. Yeah. Um, any kid that's had any kind of detention will get burpees or something at my session because we're not <laughs> we're not tolerating that. Yeah, but, no, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great to guide them, and, and also as they get older as well, I can start. Well, it doesn't need to be older. They could really be struggling with, you know what, I don't get on with my coach. Yeah. Gem, I don't get on with my coach. I can go, you know what, I don't get on with this one when I play right. football or whatever. Same. So you're using your experiences to help yeah. them grow. Again, I didn't have that when I was younger. That's why I think it's so helpful. I wish I did have someone uh, in my life that was like guiding me. So I think that's why it's – I just know it's helpful to them and that's why it's so um, – Yeah, I think so it's – I mean, even if you didn't, like, it's football's so much about, it's so similar to anyone that's got a different kind of job sometimes. Right. How do you get through hard times? How do you keep pushing when things are becoming easy? Um, right. And it's about keeping these kids on 
the right pathway. Even if it's things like, do you know what, you can be the best player in your academy or the best player in your team. But if you don't keep going like that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Like that. I was just going to say that to you. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how good you are now. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's someone else out there that is. And think yeah. of this, the, the, you know, the industry you're in. People mm-hmm. are just going to take your spot like this. Yeah. So you've always got to be on the right path. And mm-hmm. sometimes it takes having someone on your back in the right way. Because if you don't know how to communicate with that player, then they're just going to, they're not going to listen to you. And I think that's yeah. why it's so important to learn how to communicate well. Um, yeah. With and people. It's, it's teaching them how to carry themselves in the right yeah. way. Yeah, as well. And um, because uh, you know how I was speaking about the best, the highlight of my career was being a part of the team where everyone was on the same level. Yeah. Everyone embraced everyone else. And it's about teaching like these and guiding these kids to have the embraceful attitude to Definitely. becoming a professional because Definitely. I can, I can safely say, and I will swear by it my, my whole life that all I've played with some of the best players in the world, Marta, Kelly Smith, Christine Sinclair, you name it. I've trained with like Megan Rapino, trained with Carly Lloyd. They yeah. are all so humble. So yeah. humble. Kelly Smith used to give me like, let me take me to training. Like, offered to take me to training because I didn't have a car because I was young. Yeah. Like, all these players, the best players, wanted to help you. humble people, so yeah. humble and uh, willing. And Marta was the same. And there's just no like all the best players in the world. They don't have to prove anything, right? So they're just willing to help others. And I think you can teach kids and the best kids like in the that in their club or whatever. To, to have the same attitude and be willing right. to help other people. Which you exactly right. I think it's so mm-hmm. true. And I think when I was growing up, you know, all the best players were sort of like, you know, walk around yeah. with a chip, you know, like I'm the best. Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't the mentality. So I think changing that narrative and like the stories you're telling there, it's just, mm-hmm. it's so important to, that's the role model you should want to be. Even at a young age, you can, you don't know who you, how many people you can help around you. That's so just, important. Yeah, you just don't, realize that uh, people always i try to encourage the children that how you behave is how everyone's watching you all the time yeah. especially yeah. In, like in life like you 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 go anywhere people are watching you yeah and in time. football people are watching you all the time how you behave not just how you perform but how you behave how people in the family might behave so if i play and my dad is screaming at me from the from the from the sidelines <laughs> I'm gonna get judged on that. So my dad yeah. speaks a lot of speak or whatever. I don't know, right. but I think it's just crack on, do your thing, be willing to help others, and work hard. Definitely. And remember, cool. that when you don't work hard, someone else is. So exactly. make sure you keep working hard. Exactly. And I just love how you said the highlight of your career. You know, you could have gone, oh, scoring for England, or winning this, or winning this individual award. But it, that's not what you take the most um, value from. And it was a team, you know, the team environment you had at Chelsea. I just love that. Kind of, it mm-hmm. says a lot about you as a person, that, and about the the mentality we're talking about. That having a team that's all on the same page and people that respect each other is is more kind of. It's so much more um, like it resonates with you more over your career than something an individual award or sharing with other people. Yeah, I, I just think it's it's a team sport, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah, 100%. It's a team sport. And, um, yeah, we all individually need to um, do our, play our part. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, unless you have, the, you know, the whole squad, no chance. Exactly, exactly. Um, I agree. I've, I've won so many, I've, I've won so many trophies. But that's not down to me. That's down to every single person that I've been working with, down to physios, down to yeah. everything. Exactly. Um, and uh, you know all the trophies that I've won. Arsenal, we had a great team connection. If if Kelly, Kelly wasn't doing it, Yankees going and doing it, not a problem because right. we're doing it. If Yankees not doing it, Kim Little's doing it, it's not a problem. If right. they're not doing it, I'm doing it. But you can rely on each other. You have got a good vibe. And you're like, Do you know what? They're doing it today. Let's give them the ball. Let's let them do it. They're having a good yeah. day. Yeah. She's Chelsea on. Was the same. Chelsea was the same. The same. The same vibe. The vibe wasn't on it. G's on it. G's not on it. Drew Spence is on it in centre mid. Just everyone on the same level. Everyone respects each other on the same level. It's a team game. Team game. And I think that's what you like. You said if 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 a, if you're in a team and someone's struggling, there's like I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna you know work harder for her, or it's gonna be like 
oh, we're, she's not on it, so we can, we're not going to win today. There's a certain mm. way, of, like you said, that you want to lift each other and that's been all the way through your career and that's maybe why you're so successful. Maybe if you didn't have that mentality within the team, well, certainly if you didn't have that mentality within the teams as a unit, you wouldn't have won all those, all those mm. titles. Yeah, and that's why it's everyone has to commit to that. Yeah. Everyone has to commit to it, which is why it's important. I, I will credit um, Emma Hayes at Chelsea with this. Is um, Everyone seemed to be the, of a similar personality. Mm. I had that. And um, so um, I, I think um, a lot of most of the teams, are, they're creating that vibe together. I know Man City women have got a great vibe. Like yeah. that, Arsenal season, and they're performing. And um, you know what football's competitive? Everyone's going to be happy all the time. But right. if you can keep working on yourself and keep embracing what the team are trying to achieve, sky's the limit. Sky's right. the limit. And I think Tottenham, being at Tottenham this year, um, there's so there's so many different types of experience in Tottenham. Some people's first year being pro. Yeah. Tenth year being pro, for example. Yeah. Long but time. You know what? Everyone respects each other. Yeah. So no matter where they're at. Yeah, and and if you can sing off the same hymn sheet and keep keep grinding when times are tough, there, there, there's been a week when I came back from injury at Tottenham and the team had lost three games, like the, our team had lost three games on the bounce, but we came back because we had yeah, to work yeah. together. You have to yeah, you yeah. have to work together. Agreed. Working mm. together, massive. So let's mm. kind of, um, we'll wrap up with, I've got one question for you and then we'll ask, I've got questions that people have sent in and then we'll okay. we'll read off the sheet. Um What's the best advice you've been given um, and what's your best advice for people coming through? We've kind of touched on it, but just to kind of wrap it up. <clears throat> oh, best advice. There's hard question. So, I'm sure there's a lot. That's of so hard. That is so know. hard. Um, yeah. Um, best advice. There's so many people that have given me such great advice. I can't... Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. One that always sticks out to me was like a real development one for me was um kelly smith um, before a game started when i was younger she came up to me in the warm-up and she said first five minutes she went play basic right first five yeah. minutes play basic and after five minutes play one two touch first five minutes next and after that she went ruin the fullback all day <laughs> because they won't know it's coming and then they won't know what you're going to do and yeah. i think she advised me that that kind of variety um, to play basic first five, get a feel for it, um, and then really take your game in what you're going to bring to the game to to the opponent. And yeah, I, I had a great game after that. Yeah. And I don't know why. I think I really appreciated the advice because of the pressure of that level. At my I felt at my age. Right. Um. So, yeah, add variety to your to your game, and I think that's always been something. Um, that I've had to add because I've always had a reputation of being a 1v1 artist, like to, to, right. to beat people. Yeah. And obviously, the better the game's got, the more f like um, video footage people have got on players and teams. They know what you're going to do, kind of thing. So, so, yeah, and so I've gone from starting my career with just beating one player to people doubling up on me and doing putting yeah. three on me. So I've had to learn how to link, pass yeah. and move rather Great. than just Great. go... Before. Yeah, run you know more runs in behind and and yeah. things like that. So, being able to evolve and add variety to your game, I think, is really really important. Love that, love yeah. it. Awesome, Gemma. Really love that. Um, okay, I've got some. If there's going to be questions on the screen, if you want to swipe it through the comments, they'll be on the yeah. on my face or your face. I'm not sure if I'm on the top of yours. Um, um, but I've got a few questions here that people sent in um, yesterday on my story. Here's the first one. Um, which aspects of the game do you feel are the most important for teenagers to work on? Um, I mean, I'm a massive fan of technical. I yeah, think absolutely. if you're technically comfortable, um, but you know, you can talk about technique just with your your feet, but it's not. It's about your awareness and your scanning. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, I'd say the technical aspects of the game, um, being ultra, ultra comfortable on the ball, but also really raising your levels with your awareness and thinking ahead of time would be... 100%. I just think as well, kind of not shying away from your weaknesses, trying to... Yeah. If, if there's something that you're not that good at, then attack mm -hmm. that as well as focusing on your strengths in the game. 100%. Um, that's a big one, for sure. There's a good question that just came in at the bottom. If you could relive any game, which would you go back to? 
hard. That's a good question. Yeah, so many, you can have three or four. Oh my god, that's a good question. Um, really good question. Sorry, this, she sprung that on you, not me. I don't know who asked oh, that's that. That's great. That's a good question. Um, yeah, it is. I would have to say um, the game at the end of my trophy. Um, sorry, not career season. My first season when we picked the trophy up at the end. Um, yeah. I don't know. It was a great game. We beat. We. we I think I scored one assist, but it, it wasn't nice. about that. It was about the occasion and, and winning it for the club because they'd never yeah, won. Yeah, yeah. And those were spams everywhere. And John Terry was there from Chelsea. And... So, did you during your career? Do you rub shoulders with the boys a lot? Like at Spurs, do you train at the same ground, or do you have your own training facility? How does that work? Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite fortunate enough to to use the same facilities really in women's football. It's Unbelievable at Spurs really. as well. Um, I mean, every kind of age group at the, uh, the clubs and female, the women's teams and the men's teams, everyone has different training plans, but you do, right. you do come across each other. And, um, Must be cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. And um, yeah, I'll never forget, that was kind of, um, John Terry is a massive uh, Chelsea fan, isn't he? I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, Legend. Um, loves playing. Uh, so yeah. Loves playing yeah. Summer, and, yeah. I've seen her. And, um, I've seen her play a couple of times, and she, she's a, she's a big fan of, of football, so I know we used to bring her. But it, you know, it's not about having these people. It's about people coming out to the game and that occasion of, of Chelsea women picking up the trophy for the first, like the, the league trophy for That's and history. The you know? And the vibe that and the whole the crowd was massive, and uh, that was just. And then I felt on top of the world. That was the season I felt on top of the world, and I'd love to relive nice. that day again. Yeah. Nice. I think one of the Chelsea players commented she put best squad ever, Spence, 23. Ah, oh, Drew Spence, little what a baller. I'm not going to say too much because I, I, don't, I don't want to give her too much of a big head. But, um, <laughs> no, she's a great player and, and uh, you should watch out for her. She's, she's fantastic. Awesome. Um, okay, one more that someone asked yesterday. It's probably going to be like, oh, this favourite goal you've scored, is there one? Oh, wow. Um, you like so many good goals. <laughs> I, I did post one on my Instagram, and the reason that I post this, okay, was because it was my left foot. And I, okay. will, I will say to you, right, I am so right foot dominant; it's unreal. I was right, for such um, a long time, and then yeah, but um, yeah, I did post one on my Instagram um, a couple of weeks ago. I picked the ball up at the halfway line and gone for a run. Drew actually that just wrote in the uh, comments. Um, she tapped tactically ran into a play up to get out of the way. I don't know if she nice, like it and it created the space for me <laughs> okay, anyway. Nice. Thanks, mate. That's an assist. That's an assist. I'm sure she's taking Thanks it. mate, yeah. And um yeah I I put the ball in the top corner with my left foot. And wow. I think um just the distance I travelled with the ball. Um yeah. against a tough team as well. Um and then to put it top corner with my left foot. Um yeah, that's probably that's probably one of my favourites because it was just a great finish with my left foot. So I want to take that. So people, if people ever say you don't use your left foot, I want to say, look, go on my post. I'll find it and I'll post and it. Have a look. I'll find it. I'll post it on my feed. Yeah. Uh, um, here's a good one. Who was your idol you looked up to when you were younger and who inspires you today? Oh, um, I mean, how young are we talking here? Because um, I was always a big fan when I was younger, younger of Ryan Giggs because your standard, yeah. like it was a winger, outpaced everyone, ran around people. Yeah. I used to pretend to be him in my back garden, so probably Ryan <laughs> Giggs. But, you know, as I got older and started to see the female footballers more, um, yeah. I'd, I'd have to say it's, it's I don't know, I, I'd have to say Rachel Yankee. I yeah, she was amazing. Yankee. I used to love watching her. I remember watching Yankee and Smith, and she was just a left-footed winger. I just used to love it. She was quality. She was um, a massive fan favourite. I lined up for her autograph when I was younger. Oh, really? And wow. um, she actually still helps me in my career now. Like, I'm so so thankful for, for, for Yankee. She's always um, helped How me. How good but is I, that? I lined up for her autograph when I was about 12, and, and my pen ran that? out. My pen ran oh, out. Really? So I never got it, and I waited like half an hour for autograph, and oh. I, was it. I was gutted. But it's all right because I've got I, I I speak to her now, so it's just weird how you go from like idols to like um, rivals, yeah, or, but and teammates she, and then yeah, rivals, yeah, same. yeah. But unbelievable. I mean, dreams to reality. I mean, how good is that? You you've waited in line for so. I, mean, I know there's a lot of stories out there like it, but you know, it's really you're in a really privileged position. You got to do that because not not many players uh, do get the chance. But it's a testament to yourself, really. Yeah, I think um, very fortunate, but at the same time, you create your own luck as well. 
Definitely. Uh, um, have uh, Spurs sent you anything during this whole period to, are you on a training program? What sort of stuff are you doing day to day at the minute? Yeah, um, yeah, I sent a, a training program. I can imagine all the, the girls across the league are. Yeah, and, um, yeah just um, things to keep you ticking over. Running. I spent a lot of time running on a football pitch with. Uh, nice. Yeah, nice. Instead of uh, playing some football, it's been um, a bit boring, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just got to do what you can, though. Yeah, but um, you know, I've I've done um, a few different coaching challenges. Get on the ball. Um, good, good. Yeah, it's, it's been good, you know, picking up weights. Um, I bought a bike the other day, actually. So I've oh, been nice. That's a good thing to do. That's a good thing yeah. to do, I think. I think yeah. a lot of people are getting into the old bike rides now. Yeah, um, there's so many people like, on the road and you're like, I never saw you down my street with a bike before, but now I can see you with a <laughs> Everyone's bike. Everyone's got one somehow. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but that's been great. But yeah, um, Tottenham have been great sending out things to do and, and doing a lot of things on Zoom, on the online. Yeah, Zoom, well. yeah. So, um, yeah, they, they've been really good with the girls. Really good. Really good. Awesome. All right, Gemma, I really appreciate you coming on. Cool. Nice to speak with you. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for your time. I know that... Uh, <laughs> It's a tough time at the minute, but I really think this is helpful for players. So I wanted to bring you on and tell your story and hopefully people took something away from it. I know I did. So thanks again for your time. Thank you. I hope, I hope people, um, it helped people in some way. Yeah, I'm sure it did. All <laughs> right, Gemma, you take care Thank of yourself. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.